Hey guys, I'm back again. Uh, my last video, I did a dog crate table that I had never built before. And of course, you know how it is when you get to doing projects. When you do one, somehow it always leads into another. So the dog crate table that I did for my wife's friends and all, they liked it. So my wife actually liked it. So now we got this little multi-poo dog and then we keep him in an iron crate, one of the store-bought ones. And she wants me to build one for him so that it'll look better inside the house than that old blue metal crate. So I went and bought some materials and we're getting ready to get started, so stick with me and we'll see how it turns All right, out. So here's my materials. I bought five half inch by 10 foot pieces of rebar. And as you can see, it's already starting to rust from where they leave it outside at Lowe's. So I'm gonna have to clean up all this rust and then I'm gonna paint these black because you don't want it rusting when it's in your house. Now I got four two by four by eight foot longs and then I bought this project panel, which is actually called the Craft Masters, whatever. Anyhow, it's a laminated panel. But I did that because I'm gonna put, I'm gonna cut this in half and I'm gonna use this as the floor. And I'm also gonna use it for the very top of the crate. That way it'll look good once it's stained. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this rebar cleaned up and get it painted so it'll be drying. All right, the way I'm gonna get the rust off this is I don't wanna spend all day with these pieces of rebar. So I took my drill press and I put, if you can see right there, it's a little brass, brass brush used to clean whatever and get it'll get the rust off. So I'm gonna cut the drill press on and then I'll take the rebar and I'm gonna run it right up under this and just roll it over as I go until I get the whole piece done. That way to knock all the rust off, then I'll go out there and paint them. Okay, so now I'm gonna start on two by fours. I'm gonna cut four of the two by fours at 30 inches long, because that's gonna be both, both tops elongated and both bottoms. And I set this as my stop block 30 inches away. That way I know all four of them are gonna be the exact same length when I cut them. Okay, so I have those cut at 30. So with the rest of my lumber, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the uprights. And I want it to be 24 inches tall, including the the uh, tabletop on it and that's three quarter inches thick so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut these down to 23 and a quarter that way the thickness of the top of the kennel is going to make it 24 even what i did was i ran all these through the planer because you know it, it is two by fours construction lumber and sometimes they're a little thicker than the others i want to make sure one they were all the same thickness and two i just wanted to dress up the edges Plus, there's a lot less sand than I'm going to have to do. So, now, this is the ones that's going to run long ways across the bottom and then across the top. So, I'm going to go ahead and do some pocket holes in each end of those. And then I'm going to have to run some pocket holes in these, too. So, I'm going to try to knock all those out while I'm waiting for my rebar to dry. All right. So, what I'm doing now is I'm putting the edges on. I got my pocket holes. I'm going to line these up. Now I'm going to use this and put it right on the seam and clamp it down. Make sure it's flush on the bottom, which is a little bit, so I'll just knock that down, get that glue out the way. All right, and what that clamp will do is it'll keep it from moving when you go to drive the pocket screws into the slot. It's like an extra set of hands. Well. And then when you're done, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it stays perfectly flush and you ain't got to worry about it moving off the side. Because generally, when you try to use pocket screws and you drive them in, if you're just trying to hold them, just the angle that the screws go in always wants to move the wood one way or the other. So that right there really helps to keep them put, stay put. All right, so I got this set up, basically, kind of wobbly. I'm using Tight Bond 3, even though it's going to be inside. I just really like this glue. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the ends. I'm not really going to worry about rubbing it around. Then I'm going to line these up, get them to where I think they flush. 
and use this clamp. Double check my work. All right, use the clamp, clamp or hold it. You get that glue off of there, it won't stain right. And uh, so now I got pocket holes on each side of these. So I'm just gonna take the drill and run the pocket holes in there and get my sides together. So this is what we got so far. I got pretty much the whole bottom done. Now I'm gonna be putting, like I said, the rebar. I'm gonna be doing the rebar. So I'm gonna get everything lined up and I just realized I screwed up because the rebar is going to have to go down here and I've already put these stupid things right here together. So, huh. Nice. Nice. Okay, so I guess after putting the carriage in front of the horse, I realized that, like I said on the previous clip, that I screwed up. So I went ahead and disassembled everything before the glue <laughs> dried. Here's the side walls, and we're back to square one. So basically, what I forgot to do is since I'm putting bars in this thing, oh me, uh, I don't have to drill holes in here. Probably, I think the bars are half inch in diameter, so I'm gonna probably do the same size and then go about a half inch down in the wood. So it's gonna be a lot easier to drill them when this thing's not assembled on the old drill press than it is already a box. So yeah, wood one, me zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark these stupid things down and get to get it ready for to be drilled, I guess. And then do it all over again. All right, so what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be the bottom that's gonna run long ways. And this is gonna be the one directly above it. So basically what I'm gonna do is, as you see the pocket holes are facing each other. So I'm gonna mark these together and I'm gonna drill them the same but basically what i'm gonna do is when i draw my mark i'll put them together and i'll draw my mark so when i take this one and put it on the top and i rotate the pocket hole in then the holes are going to la line up exactly right where the bars are not going to be leaning one way or the other so i'm gonna go ahead and get these marked like i said before and then i'll show you what i'm talking about when i get done all right so after i recuperated for that from that big mess up i did this is what I did. <clears throat> like I said, I measured it. I'm doing these about every two inches for the bars because bars are half inch once again. And then I just took, where is it at? I took a combination square, set it for three quarters of an inch, put my pencil on the end of it and just ran along to help me get that line down. There. So everywhere the line crosses is where I'm going to, I drill the hole. So basically this is what it looks like when you're done. And I'm using the the rebar is a half inch and I'm actually using a 5 8 inch forcing a bit because I want it to have a little bit of play. I don't want to have to hammer them down in there because it's going to probably be a pain in the butt to try to line all these up when I go to put it, the whole crate together. So I just drilled right there center of that and you can tell, I mean, it's a nice clean hole. So I've got those and the one sitting right there on the front of my four wheeler. I got a lot of holes to drill, so let me get busy. All right, so now I'm back to where I was a long time ago. But as you can see, I got the holes all the way around for the bars. And then right here, that's where the door is gonna go. So I'm gonna have the bars on the side, then I'm gonna have to frame a door in, then of course put more bars in the middle of that. So now I'm getting ready to use, you can use a hacksaw or an angle saw, but I have a metal cutting chop saw so I'm going to go ahead and set that up on the workbench and get the rebar in here and cut it down to size. I got the front side in there ready to go now i'm gonna do the back side you see i got the bars all painted so it's just a matter of a little bit of tedious work on trying to line these things up i think i'm gonna have to enlist the help of my wife and my daughter so i get the extra hands to hold them things where so i can get them in the holes but we'll see in just a second this is where we are so far i added this piece here because that's what's going to be the frame for my door 
So basically all I did, and if you're wondering, I went ahead and stained this. That way I wouldn't have to worry about doing it around the bars once I got them in. But I cut these and just left maybe a quarter of an inch gap. That way when I even it out, the door is not gonna hit. And then I did these with pocket holes. I'll turn them where you can see them. Bear with me trying to do this while I'm holding the camera. There you go. All right. I've got my holes there. I have my holes in here. So basically this is gonna be the door frame. And then I'm gonna put bars in the center of that as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get these things stained too and then let it dry a little bit and then I'll get the bars in the door. Here's the door with it being completed. And like I said, it's just glued and pocket holed together with the bars in the center. Now what I'm fixing to do is I got this sitting on the side and I was wondering what I was gonna do with the floor. So I figured I'm gonna do this the easy way. I had some of this scrap, sorry for my fingers being in the view, but I had some of this scrap laying around and I'm just gonna take and put that right here on the bottom. That way it'll get the kennel up off the floor a little bit. But with this attached, I'm gonna attach it with inch and a quarter screws. As you can see, it's gonna give you that much hanging on the inside. So basically what I'm gonna do is put one on every corner and then cut that, that project panel right there. And I'm gonna cut it and I'm just gonna let it lay freely on top of that. That way it's not anchored in or anything. That way in time, if the dog has an accident or something like that and it ends up ruining the wood, all you gotta do is lift it up and pop it back out of there. But anyhow, so I'm gonna go ahead and get those attached to the bottom. So here's where we at, I got the floor in. <clears throat> right there and stained. Now I'm waiting, I got the wood stove going, it's cold out here, so hoping that heat will dry the stain on the top right there. So now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, my door is complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some small shims. If I don't have any, I'll just cut one off of a two by four. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this door on and get the hinges and all that on. And then lastly, I'll go ahead and drop the bars in here and then put that other piece across the top. Here's where we are now. I got that side on to where the end. And I got the door on. And what I did was I just put simple barrel, barrel locks. That way it'll swing freely and then you want to lock a dog in do that but the reason i did that is i got a small dog and i didn't want to put it in the center and him push on the bottom so i wanted it secure where he couldn't squeeze his way out so on the top i just put two braces in the center and i'm going to take that top piece and i'm going to run glue all the way around the edges and down both of those and i'm just going to attach the top with some brad nails and let the glue do its job and especially with the stain on it like that that dark walnut you can't see the brads so i'm going to get the top on and then she'll be done so here it is the final project with everything done do a quick walk around So that's it. Time, very, very time consuming, but I think in the end, it's worth it. It looks a whole lot better than that metal doll crate. And I'll, sh I'll throw up a picture of what we did keep him in versus this one. Well, I'm finally glad that one's done after all my errors and everything, but hey, doing woodworking, I don't know of anybody that goes through it and does everything flawlessly. That's what makes you learn. So like I always say, thank you for watching. I hope y'all have a great day. Like and subscribe.